Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. Today in our gospel again, we see how um, the Jews are uh, so upset with Jesus, saying he's claiming to be God, and uh, it's like it's like almost like a funny back and forth. He he claims to be God. They say he claims to be God. He says you're mad at me because I because I say I'm the Son of God. You're saying you're God. I'm saying I'm the Son of God. You know, it seems like on the surface there's a difference, but really I think they're they're upset too, be, really because of the if we think about what it means to claim to be a son or a daughter of God. As we've, we've said it before in the past, you know, um, God adopts part of the salvation as God is a, salvation is basically divine adoption. God is adopting us as his children. And he cannot make us his children unless he does something with our nature. You know, you and I, we love animals, but I can't adopt my dogs. You know, they don't have a human nature. Yeah, and so the same thing, God cannot adopt us unless somehow we have or are participating or sharing in a divine nature because God is divine. He has totally different nature than us. And so this is part of the good news that God um, transforms our nature. Uh, the, <clears throat> in in um, the couple different sayings they have to try to to summarize it or make it simple, they say what, what Jesus is in his, by nature, naturally, you and I become by God's grace. A son or a daughter of God. That, that means human and divine. Now, we don't become divine autonomously or apart from God. What we, we, it's, it's what St. Peter and St. Paul teach. We share or participate in the divine nature. God shares his nature with us. And so, in a sense, we share in the divine nature of God and have divinity flowing through us, first by his Holy Spirit within us. And then, Jesus' own divine life keeps flowing through us, and we're participating with that divine life as long as we stay connected or remain in Jesus. This is the whole parable of the vine and the branches. Jesus is the vine, and you and I are the branches, and if we stay connected with Jesus, we bear much fruit or he continues his ministry and his presence in the world through you and I, his divine presence, <laughs> you know? And this is, so this is, um, this, is what Je- this is why they're so mad, because Jesus is saying that he is divine. <laughs> he said, I'm a son of God. That means he ha- must have a divine nature. So they're very upset about that. Um, but this is actually the good news. And this is shocking still for some Catholic Christians and for some Christians, they, they just can't get it. You know? Um, I'll always be imperfect. I'll always be sin, full of sin. I'll always be this. I'll always be that. I'll never be like Jesus. But that's actually the good news. That's our purpose now. Empowered and filled with Jesus' own Holy Spirit. To be like him on earth. To manifest his presence in the world around us. To continue his ministry, his presence in the world. Saying what he says. Doing what he did. Allowing him free reign in our life to continue his ministry and presence around us. Allowing him free reign so he can heal the sick around us. Raise the dead around us. Drive out demons around us. The only limitation is us. (laughs) You know? If we're scared, if we're uh, too insecure because of our weaknesses, if we're um, too afraid to let go of control to God. But this is the high calling of the Christian, to be participating in divine nature, sharing in this divine life. And it's one of participation. It's not autonomous. We don't become other gods. We just get to share in God's own divine life. <clears throat> now, this looks different for everybody. For John, um, it looks different for everybody. John the Baptist, we see at the very end of this passage, they say, you know, John performed no sign, but everything John said about this man was true. 
So think about that. John, one of the greatest prophets, the great forerunner of Jesus Christ, the one called to introduce the world to Christ before he came on the public scene. John, whom Jesus said, there's no one uh, born of woman greater than John the Baptist. John the Baptist is the greatest person ever to be born of a woman. That's what Jesus said. And it says that John performed no signs. No signs, no wonders, no miracles. There was no healings. But everything John said about this man was true. So as disciples, we've been talking about how, you know, we say what Jesus said and we do what Jesus did. John was able to say the truth. He was preaching the truth, proclaiming the truth, announcing the truth about Jesus. And they finally get it. Everything John said, taught, preached about this man is true. But John wasn't able to heal anybody. You know, he, does that mean because John wasn't praying for people to be healed? Of course he was praying. He taught his disciples how to pray as well. That's why Jesus' disciples say, hey, teach us to pray like John taught his disciples. So it just uh, takes a lot of pressure off because you and I, we're called to proclaim the truth about God. Every one of us can do this to those around us. We know something about God, some truth about God. We have some kind of relationship with God that we can share with other people around us. And then we can pray. We can pray for people to be healed, to be raised from the dead, cleansed of any sickness, disease, leprosy, cancer, whatever. We can pray that demons will be, uh, leave people's lives, first leave our life, <laughs> leave my life, leave my house, leave my marriage, leave my family, get out of here, you don't belong in this territory. We can pray for all those things, and it's up to Jesus to continue his ministry through us. It's up to Jesus to do the healing through us if he wants, if he's willing. It's up to Jesus to raise the dead through us if he's willing. It's up to Jesus to cleanse of every sickness, disease, leprosy, cancer, if he's willing. It's up to Jesus to drive out demons through us if he's willing. It's just up to you and I to pray for it, to be available. And we may end up like John. Some of us may end up like John, where Jesus, just for whatever reason, does no sign through us. But that simply means, that doesn't mean we're not doing something right. doesn't mean we're doing something wrong. It means we can still be preaching and proclaiming the truth of who Jesus is. It simply means what John also taught himself in chapter 3. He said, a man, they, when he was questioned himself, he said, look, a man can only receive what is given him from heaven. You and I can only receive the gifts that are given to us from heaven. If God wants us to proclaim his truth, he'll, he'll help us proclaim his truth. If he wants to work signs and wonders and miracles through us, he'll give us that gift, that ability, those opportunities. But if he doesn't, then he doesn't. And what do we care anyway? It's God's plan. He's the one that's got to do the works. We're just walking with him, participating with him in his divine nature, in his plans. So, Father, we just thank you for your truth that you continue to proclaim and teach to us. We ask you to continue to just help our hearts be full of peace with our part in your plan, whatever that may be, Lord to teach your truth, proclaim your truth to those around us, to pray for people to be healed and so that some miracle or sign might be worked in their life to help them come to believe in you. Whatever it is, Lord, we just pray. What we pray for is open hearts, open hearts so that your divine life can flow through us freely without any hindrance, without any limitation, and you can continue your presence, your ministry of reconciliation in the world around us. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, amen.